Eden Zero is a sci-fi fantasy action series from fairy tale and raid master creator Hiro Mishima. The first 12 episodes, which consisted of the first 4 arcs, are now available in English on Netflix, and my thoughts expressed in this video will be based on that. The series focuses on a teenage boy named Shiki Granbell and his friends, traveling the galaxy in search of a mysterious being called Mother, who is said to have the ability to grant wishes. In the beginning, Shiki meets and befriends a girl named Rebecca Blue Garden and her companion Happy when they arrive on the planet Granbell to make videos. After leaving Granbell with Rebecca, Shiki registers as an adventurer and they decide to go on a journey to find Mother. In the process of trying to find a better ship to leave what is known as the Sakura Cosmos, they meet several allies and encounter many dangerous foes along the way. Initially, Shiki just wanted to see the world and make a bunch of friends, having lived his whole life among machines on planet Granbell. Eden Zero opens up with Shiki looking at the night sky with two robots, his friend Michael and his grandfather Ziggy referred to as the Demon King. The Demon King instilled in Shiki the importance of having friends when he was a young child. It's made abundantly clear what the main theme of this show is within the first opening minutes. Similar to his past work with Fairy Tale, Mishima emphasizes the theme of friendship to a ridiculous degree. During the series opening scene alone, the word friend is used 6 times. That word is used around 25 times in the first episode. Unfortunately, just like with Fairy Tale, the dialogue is repetitive and for lack of a better word is basic most of the time. I wouldn't say it's as heavy handed as Fairy Tale, but it certainly could be much better. Nevertheless, I still chuckled sometimes when Shiki would go around asking random people to be his friend. That running joke might get old to some people, but even after re-watching the show, it was still entertaining. I was caught off guard by the fact that this series is way more profane than what I remember from Fairy Tale. The dialogue seems skewed a bit more mature this time around, and I wonder how close the English dub is to the Japanese subtitle translation. Anyway, one of the main criticisms Eden Zero has faced since the release of its manga back in 2018 is with its character designs looking too similar to the author's previous works. Fortunately, most of the characters seem distinct in terms of their personality despite looking like alternative takes on Mishima's other creations. As I was watching characters like Shiki or Weiss Steiner, I wasn't constantly thinking to myself, oh that's just Natsu with black hair or Grey with blonde hair. Shiki is excitable and a bit strange due to him never leaving Grand Bell and interacting with anyone outside of machines his whole life. In terms of his temperament, I'd say he's not as hot blooded as Natsu, but he will get angry on behalf of his friends. In one scene, Shiki got so infuriated that he basically lost control. Aside from those moments of rage, Shiki is quite chill compared to the loud and often impulsive Natsu. Another distinction from Natsu is that Shiki has a fear of bugs, although Natsu had his own issue with motion sickness. I was actually surprised by Weiss's personality and behavior. He's basically an opportunist, but at the same time he's kind-hearted, even though he tries to downplay that side of him. Weiss is also a bit of a pervert, and based on what I've seen so far, I'd say he's not quick to trust people. There's a cool sci-fi element tied to this character too that I don't want to spoil. Rebecca is one of those characters that might be a bit too similar to what we've seen before from this author. Whereas Lucy was a writer, Rebecca is Eden Zero's equivalent of a YouTuber referred to as a B-Cuber. She wants to gain a million subscribers and make a video of them finding mother for her channel. She's cheerful and has been shown to have a big appetite, but other than those traits and her backstory, there isn't much that really distinguishes the character from Lucy. Happy is written slightly differently than he is in Fairy Tale. In the other series, Happy was quick thinking and playfully impudent. This version of the character seems toned down a bit in comparison. He isn't crazy about fish and doesn't say his signature catchphrase occasionally. I appreciate the subtle differences between the two versions and I like this more tragic backstory which is tied to Rebecca. Mishima at least put some effort into making Happy fit into the story without rehashing what he did before with the character. Elsie, Crimson, and Justice are probably the laziest and uninspired characters in terms of their design and personality. It's literally just Urza as a space pirate with an eye patch and Jalal with silver hair as part of the space police. I haven't seen enough of them yet to write them off as bad characters, but they stick out compared to the rest of the cast. In contrast, characters like Lobelia Christie, Homer Kogetsu, Sister Ivory, and Pino seem fresh and wholly original. Lobelia is a popular B-Cuber who is typically mean and condescending toward Rebecca. 
I totally understand anyone who might hate this character, but I actually started to like the character more after her initial appearance. There doesn't seem to be much to Labilia, and the same can be said about the Adventurer Guild receptionist Clarice. The Samurai Homura has already become one of my favorite characters alongside Labilia and Weiss. Judging off of the few episodes that I've seen with her in it, she seems respectful and virtuous, but has a tendency to constantly blurt out what she's thinking. This character quirk has already led to a few funny moments already, and without spoiling anything, Homura is looking for her master and she wants to fight Shiki. The main cast as well as some of the supporting characters was entertaining to watch and there were a few mysteries set up that seemed interesting. Unfortunately the antagonists are by and large forgettable, unremarkable and paper thin. Jin, a member of the mercenary squad called Rogue Out is an exception to that statement. I'm willing to exclude Rogue Out's leader from that statement as well given her motivation for starting the group and the reveal near the end of the Gilst arc. With that said, Jen is the most interesting antagonist out of the ones introduced so far, which to be fair isn't really saying much. His motivation for joining Rogue Out is a personal one and he's shown that he isn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Other villains like Seabeer and Elega are weak and one dimensional characters. To give Mishima credit, there is a consistent theme among the villains where they dehumanize, devalue, and mistreat robots or humans, viewing them as merchandise or objects. With much better writing, Elega and his hobby of turning women into furniture could have been compelling. Unfortunately, the character ends up being a throwaway villain with a very boring motivation for his actions, which pretty much boils down to, I do it because I can. I won't even waste my breath talking about Seabear and his goons. Aside from the mostly underwhelming villains, episode 4 introduces a character named Xiao Mei who appears periodically, breaking the fourth wall to serve as the narrator. At this point in the story she seems like an unnecessary addition, but it's alluded to that she'll be important later on. Eden Zero is moving at a steady pace so far and its world is expansive. The world Mishima has created here is much larger than anything he's conceived in the past. Each planet that Shiki and his friends visit has its own unique history, environment, and inhabitants. I'm hesitant to say this because I haven't watched Fairy Tale in years, but I think the world building just might be a bit better in this series. At the very least, the world is vast and richer by comparison. Mishima leans heavily into sci-fi elements while not abandoning his fantasy roots by introducing Aether and Aether Gear, which is basically mana and magic. So far there has only been a handful of Aether Gear shown, and each one can do different things. For example, Shiki's Aether Gear allows him to manipulate gravity while Weiss's Machina Maker allows him to modify machines. The action and animation is another aspect of this series that is a slight improvement from Fairy Tale. Eden Zero is animated by JC Staff, the same studio behind the Tuaru series, and most recently combatants will be dispatched. During action scenes, this show has a lot of the typical moments where certain movement and attacks landing are shown through limited animation or static images with the camera sometimes moving in one direction. Depending on the episode and the scene, you might get something like what I just described or you might get something much higher in quality. There are a few dynamic action scenes where the studio stepped the animation up a bit and utilized the camera to make some really engaging scenes. Sometimes when Shigi uses his ether gear, the camera will rotate as he flies through the air. The camera work and occasional bumps in animation really elevate certain scenes past what we got from Mishima's previous show. It's also worth noting that JC staff often uses CGI for things like mech suits, cars, and dragons, all of which really stick out like a sore thumb. I think the CGI dragons are the worst out of the bunch. One aspect of this series that isn't as good as Fairy Tale is the soundtrack. The opening and ending song is great and there are a few decent tracks, but nothing on the same level as Mishima's last series. Fairy Tale's main battle theme is iconic and unique thanks to its Celtic inspired sound. On the other hand, one of the battle themes in Eden Zero just sounds like generic rock music and is too simplistic. Something that is consistent across both series is Hiro Mishima's classic humor and the abundance of fan service. This show is full of fan service, from fairy tale Easter eggs in the background of certain scenes to, well, stuff like this. Mishima has a habit of undercutting a serious or emotional scene for the sake of comedy or fan service. Thankfully, that hasn't really been an issue so far. There is maybe one instance where I think he could have held back on a comedy and that was in a scene where Rebecca first woke up after being captured. I enjoyed the comedy in this and I didn't mind the fan service with the women due to how absurd the writing is. However, I totally acknowledge that the amount of fan service in the show might bother some people. 
All things considered, I enjoyed my time watching the first dozen episodes of Eden Zero. However, this anime currently has a lot of flaws. As of right now, the villains are mostly lackluster, some character designs lack creativity, the dialogue is repetitive, the background music can be bland, the CGI doesn't mesh well and can look ugly at times, and there is a lot of fan service. With that said, I still think this series has the potential to soar higher than its predecessors if its world continues to expand in an interesting way. Mishima doesn't ruin big fights by using friendship buffs as a crutch. The animation and dialogue improve, better villains are introduced, and the characters grow in a meaningful way. If you liked Fairy Tale, then you'll probably enjoy this, but if you didn't, then I can't really recommend it. For those that haven't seen an anime based off of Hiro Mishima's other works, I suggest giving it a shot. If you've seen this show, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section below, and as always, thank you guys for watching, I'm out of here, peace.